Okay, so we're going to continue our uh, conversations and discussions. Uh, today we're going to talk about capital market theory, uh, specifically the cap M, which is capital asset pricing model. Uh, this chapter uh, or this concept is quite tricky to understand. It is a, one of those convoluted concepts in finance that you actually would end up taking um, co full courses in if you decide to go into accounting finance area. Uh, so today we're just going to touch upon very basic stuff of uh, uh, the capital uh, market theories um, and uh, go into some detail with, with uh, touching a, a formula um, uh, for this purpose. So uh, basically I'm going to describe to you the capital market theory, uh, the capital market line as it exists, um, and the CAPM model and some of the conclusions from CAPM model that we can derive. So the next slide talks about uh, what a capital market theory is. So uh, a capital market theory basically tries to describe the prices of the assets in the financial markets. So all your stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and so on. Why do they? Why are they priced at what they are priced at? Capital market theories try to describe their innate nature, inherent nature, towards the uh, the pricing model. The one pricing model that we're going to, to, to discuss today uh, is the capital asset pricing model, or CAPM for short. It relates the required rate of return for any investment with the market risk for that investment as measured by beta. I know at this point, you're looking at all these uh, terms and thinking about what they mean. So basically, the required rate of return implies what you are looking at an investment to uh, return uh, give a return for you. So uh, a required rate of return can be uh, looked at through different angles and obviously market risk implies the risks that we have studied in the previous uh, presentation and beta we will talk about in a, in a couple of minutes what, what that is and how that relates to CAPM. Before we go into the details of CAPM we must look at some of the assumptions uh, that CAPM has um, been built around. Um, as you will study further in, in post-secondary uh, education, you will notice that some of these assumptions will be relaxed and the formula for CAPM will become bigger because you would have to include those non-assumptions uh, into the formula. So right now it is a basic understanding of CAPM and the assumptions that are built to describe CAPM are listed on the slide. So basically, number one says use of identical info. Uh, that means that everyone who is trying to um, who's trying to analyze CAPM or trying to analyze a company and come up with a CAPM has similar info available through public information systems such as the annual reports of the companies and or the internet. Number two assumption is same one period time horizon. You must look at the same one to one period time horizon, meaning you need to, if you're going to compare different companies, you should look at the similar years rather than different years of different companies. Number three, borrow or lend money at the risk-free rate of return. RF stands for risk-free. So this means that we are assuming that every company can borrow or lend money at the basic risk-free rate of return which is pretty much the prime rate of return that a bank has. So currently it is around 2-3%. Number four, no transaction costs, which means that any time um, that they are borrowing money or selling stocks or whatnot, they, there is no cost to them or to the buyer or seller. Number five says no personal income taxes, so for individuals that there, there is no accounting for income taxes in this formula. Number six, there is no inflation, which is pretty obvious that we're assuming that there's no inflation. And number seven says that no single investor can affect the price of a stock, even though these people can, can really do if there is an individual, a high net worth individual or someone who owns 30-40% of the company, of course they can affect the price of that stock, but we're assuming that they cannot. Number eight is equilibrium in capital markets. The word equilibrium is an economic term which means that everything is balanced, that there are enough buyers for, for sellers, and there are enough sellers for buyers, and market will always absorb 
uh, the stocks or anything that you would like to sell or buy. So these eight assumptions are, um, are built into the formula, but most of them are invalid assumptions, in realistically speaking. Um, I, I would feel that number one and number two are valid because those are assumptions that we do need. Um, and then number three to number eight would be invalid assumptions because they are just building on the formula to make it simple so we can understand it a bit more. So what is this formula that we talk of? If you go to this slide, uh, you will see that um, there's a formula written here. We are trying to measure cap M using K. So K is the variable that we are measuring and cap M is the concept that we are using. You can look at that the K represents the minimum expected rate of return necessary to induce an investor to purchase a security. So this in, in a simplistic fashion means that um, you calculate K for different companies and you have a goal in your own mind. So if you have a goal of, let's say, that you're going to invest a certain amount of dollars and you need to make a minimum of 7%, that's your minimum, basic minimum requirement. And when you calculate Ks of 100 companies, let's say 80 of them have K, which is less than 7%. So right out there, you will not you look at those 80 companies. It is a process of elimination. It helps you eliminate those companies that do not fall within your goals. So uh, K is basically, as I had mentioned earlier, a minimum expected rate of return necessary to induce an investor to purchase the stock or the bond or mutual fund or any other security. How do you measure this? In a simplistic term, you have K, which equals risk-free rate, which is the rate of return that you will get by putting money into a savings account, which is very, very basic, very, very minimum minimal at these times, plus the risk premium. Risk premium implies that you would earn a premium on investing uh, in, a, in a stock or investing in an uh, uh, investment which is risky. So you are going to make risk free regardless because that you can make that very easily without taking any risk by just going to a bank account and opening a bank account there. By going to a bank and opening a bank account there. But why would you make uh, an investment into a risky investment because you would like to make a risk premium. So risk premium is on top of the risk free rate. So you can see from the formula K equals RF which is the risk free rate plus beta <laughs> times the expected return of the market minus the risk free rate. So you have this expected return of the market which everyone can analyze and say that this year market is going to make this much or expected to make this much. And beta is company specific. So beta is the risk factor of the companies. So if, if, if company is very risky, beta would be high. If company is not as risky, beta would be low. If company is less risky than average, it would be less than one. Right? So you've got to think about why beta exists. In this course, we're not worried about betas. We're not worried about how to calculate betas. We're just looking at a beta is given to you how would you calculate the rest of the stuff around it? Usually K. So um, looking at the rest of the information. So cap M can be very, very, um, very, very uh, um, useful as long as you understand that it is only for uh, a purpose of process of elimination from the, the number of securities that, that exist in, the, in, uh, in your area of investment. Um, now coming back to the previous slide, you see that we're talking about capital market line here. Capital market line is a graphical representation of cap M in general. So you can see that you have the risk free rate which is more than zero and then you have the, the uh, risk which can be um, you know represented by the change in market. So you have all of this uh, represented in a graphical line. You see the higher the risk the higher the potential return. So you see the line, which is L, keeps on increasing based on uh, the risk that you are taking with a particular investment. So this is not an extremely difficult uh, graph to understand. It's just for you to understand that higher the risk, the higher the potential return. And then you have the SML, which is the securities market line. Uh, so capital market line is actually representative of the entire market. 
and SML is representing one security. So it may be wiggly. It may not be as straight as the CML. So now having understand, understood somewhat about CAPM, what are the, its conclusions? CAPM is basically uh, very, very common, uh, uh, provides very, very common sense conclusions. As you can see, the conclusions are very logical. They say, uh, number one, risk and return are positively related. The greater the risk, the greater the potential return. And then the second conclusion is that the investors will only invest if they get a minimum return suggested by CAPM. So if your CAPM of a company is 7%, and you wanted to have a minimum uh, return of 7%, then you may take a look at this company. Number three, it says the investor must feel comfortable with the risk. It tries to tell you that the higher the risk, the higher the potential return, and the risk, as I said, is calculated using beta in this formula. Um, so you, the, the individual, the investor, would find out what the risk factors are for this particular company, and they would understand that. Now, as I mentioned, beta is a uh, risk, systematic risk of a particular stock, and it is an estimate. It is not um, a, a very objective amount, number. Everything in finance uh, it, it tends to be subjective, so it has its different roots to it. So just to finalize, just to summarize, uh, let's take a look at the formula once again. So K, which is cap M, equals RF, which is risk-free rate, plus, then you do this multiplication first, which is beta times expected rate of market minus RF. And remember the, the concept of bed mass, so you do the second part first, and then you add the risk-free rate to it, and you would end up with the K of the company. So uh, that's it that I wanted to talk about today. If you need to do more research on cap M, if you feel that you would like to know a bit more about it, you're more than welcome to talk to me or I can give you some resources to look at for uh, uh, by yourself. Thank you for listening.